By far, the most requested item for the cardboard house has been a grandfather clock. And today I will be making a clock for the cardboard house and I will be providing you with a free pattern so you can make one for yourself. I've kind of hesitated on making a grandfather clock. First of all, it's kind of a very technical thing to try and make out of cardboard, so it was a little bit intimidating. And also, there are a few other videos already on YouTube on how to make grandfather clocks. And so if you are looking for something a little bit more traditional than what I am making today, I will link those videos down below. But today, I am moving past those hesitations and I am going to be making a fairy godmother clock. The reason I'm calling this, I don't know if you know this, but there are grandfather clocks, there are grandmother clocks, there are granddaughter clocks, and grandson clocks. I'm not quite sure of the difference between all of them. I think it has something to do with size, but I'm following kind of the naming pattern and going with gr fairy godmother clock. I think it's really fun how over the years clock artisans have put a lot of personality and style and even comedy at times into clocks and so I wanted to take a little bit of that and put it into my own clock that I felt kind of matched the vibe of the cardboard house. Before we start off today you are going to want to download the free pattern. It is in the description box which is below the title of this video. Sometimes you have to click it to make it open up. And make sure to say thank you to Paula Storm. She is the one who put the patterns together for me in a readable form. Seriously, I sent her this and she made it into something a little bit more readable. She also has her own YouTube channel, which I will link down below if you wanna check it out. So without further ado, let's get started. To make the body of the clock, I'm going to be using mostly chipboard, which is this cereal box or food box type material. It does not have the corrugation in the center. I'm also going to be using a little bit of cardboard that does have the corrugation in the center. When you look on the pattern, these will help you distinguish which pieces I cut out of which material. I'm starting with these two pieces, which are cut from chipboard, and then these two long skinny pieces that will make up the sides of the clock. The two curvy pieces are actually going to make the front of our clock, and I'm going to begin by gluing them together. The shorter one gets glued to the back of the taller one that has the crown shape on top. Lining these up correctly will leave a small reveal that goes around the sides. You know you've done it correctly if the inside shapes line up and the bottom of the two pieces line up. And I'm going to be using tacky glue to put them together and I'm going to make sure that they are completely dry before I move on to the next step. That's pretty important. You will be much less frustrated if you let everything dry completely between each step. I'm also going to be putting some heavy weights on top of my pieces so that nothing warps during drying. Now I'm taking the two long rectangles that I had cut out earlier and I am going to be pre-bending them before I start adding them to the sides of my clock. This is going to make it much easier to get it to go around the curves. The edges of these pieces need to be pushed up against the edge of the smaller curvy piece that we just glued down. This gives you kind of a template of where you need to put the side walls of the clock. I'm going very slow as I do this, taking my time, and once I get the wall in place where I like it, I tack it with some hot glue and let it dry before moving on. Going slow on this will really save some frustration. Once I get it curved all the way down the side, I am going to take my scissors and cut off any excess. Next, I'm going to take the other piece and I am going to attach it at the top of the clock to continue going around. Now, you can cut one very long piece that didn't fit on my template, and I ended up doing it in two pieces anyway, but you can cut one piece and try and curve it around the entire clock, but I ended up doing it with two pieces and that seemed to work okay. Next, I'm going to go ahead and sand the inside of the clock face area. I'm actually kind of building this clock from the inside out, so if it doesn't quite make sense yet, hopefully it will down the road, the reason I'm doing certain things in certain orders. Here I'm taking some paint and I'm just going to paint the inside of that circle, so once I have the clock face installed, I don't have to go back and paint it. 
I'm going to be taking the face dial from the template and I'm cutting out one of the circles that's the same size out of chipboard. I'm also, this is optional, I'm taking some toy packaging and I'm going to be cutting out a plastic piece that is also the same size as the other two circles and this is going to serve as a faux glass face for my clock. I did make this clock face myself. There are some other ones out there that were really cool but they were either copyrighted or somebody's artwork and I didn't want to just steal them and put them in my pattern. So I created this moon phase face plate for the clock on my own, so you're welcome to use that. But if you're not making this to sell or put on social media, um, you can use some, you can use a different clock face that you look up. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Um, but I did want to provide one for you. So I glued the clock face onto the chipboard piece and I also, I, I didn't glue the plastic piece on. Basically what I'm doing is I'm sandwiching the plastic piece between the clock face and the clock body. If I do put glue on it, I run the risk of it squeezing out or looking weird. While I have it in place, I go ahead and tack it with some hot glue so that it doesn't move. So this way it's stuck in place, but there's no glue seeping out underneath the plastic. I'm now going to be sanding and prepping the door area in the center part of the clock body. The same way I did for the clock face, I sanded it down and now I'm just adding some paint so that it's pre-painted before I add anything in that area. I'm going to be cutting out two of these shapes from the pattern. This is what's going to make my faux clock door. If you want to make a real clock door, you just probably need to add some hinges, but I wanted to keep mine pretty simple. I don't think I'll be opening it again, so I'm just going to be gluing my door on. I am again just doubling it up, so this is a double layer of chipboard, and then adding something heavy on top so it stays flat. I am also going to be sanding the opening for this door and pre-painting it just to make my steps down the road a little bit easier. For this part of the pattern, you can also do the optional plastic if you want to have a glass door, but if you want to put shelves inside your clock or I don't know, you could do all sorts of things with your clock. You don't have to do this step, but I did want to have a glass look to the door like it was enclosing something inside. Well, it'll be enclosing clock parts inside, <laughs> but um, I did want to add this step. Optional, if you have some packaging and you want it to look like a glass door, all you need to do is cut out a piece that is the same shape. I did cut down the edges just a little bit so I didn't see any plastic sticking out over the edge, but roughly the same shape. And then I did glue this one on, making sure I didn't put too much glue so none of it like, came out underneath the edges. Once that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and glue it onto the front of the clock. If you did decide you wanted to have an opening door, I suggest you put the door to the side and then install it after you have painted the clock body. Now I'm going to be using a small cardboard piece that I've cut to this shape. And the reason I'm using this is I think it's just a little bit stronger when I'm just using one piece to use cardboard instead of chipboard. Uh, because it has the corrugation, this one has some of my children's drawing on it. I'm going to cut it to size so that it fits perfectly in this neck area of the clock, but I am not going to glue it in. Right now, I'm just trying to fit it to make sure that it is the right size. And I did notice it is sticking out just slightly. This, because this is a handmade miniature, you may have to make a few adjustments to the pieces, but most of it should fit together and then you can just kind of cut things so that they are the right size according to your miniature. Once I know I have it the right size, I'm going to put it to the side so that I don't lose it because it is a pretty important part later. I'm going to follow the same exact steps for the, I guess I would call it the waist, <laughs> the waist part of the clock. It goes right underneath the door glass opening. This one I am going to be gluing in because I'm not doing anything else to this piece. It's just to create a floor for the open part of the clock. I'm also going to be creating a piece down here at the bottom. 
One thing I didn't mention was the opening at the bottom of the clock. That is optional. If you don't want an opening at the bottom of your clock, just don't cut that part out. Leave it in. It's that kind of weird bow tie shaped piece. Um, you don't have to cut that out if you don't want to. Okay, I've got my two lower levels glued in and I took out that piece I hadn't glued in and put it off to the side. And before I do anything else, I'm going to paint the interior of the clock. This is because you can see through the glass door and I don't want you to be able to see the packaging that's still there. I want to make sure it looks like the inside of the clock. And once I put the back on, I'm not going to be able to paint it. Now I have cut out from chipboard the, the clock swinger thing. What do we call that? The pendulum and two little detail pieces. I have two Q-tips and four pony beads. These are some optional pieces to glue on just to give the pendulum a little bit more interest. You can put whatever you want on there, hearts, stars, bats, nothing at all, whatever you want um, to make your clock unique. Now I'm going to be working on the weights that go on the inside of the clock. And to do this, I'm using some Q-tips and then I am gluing the pony beads on the bottom of the Q-tips. I ended up doing two pony beads for each weight. I just thought it looked a little bit more like a weight, <laughs> like a little heavier, uh, but you can do as many as you like, or you can do some interesting shaped beads. Um, really, this is, there's so many different ways that you could customize this. Before moving on, I am going to paint each one of these pieces. I decided to go with a gold for the interior parts of the clock. So I painted everything with a base coat of brown and then a top coat of gold. Now I'm working again with that piece that we cut for the neck part of the clock and we are going to attach the pendulum and the two weights to this piece before it is glued into the clock. All I did was cut a slit and then insert the pendulum inside. It does not swing, but I don't, I don't plan to have it like working in my dollhouse. It's just, you know, to look nice. So I'm not worrying about that. I'm just gluing it in place. I'm also measuring where I want my weights to hang on the inside of the clock. And then I am cutting into that piece of cardboard and I'm actually using my craft knife and I'm swirling it so it makes holes large enough for the Q-tip pieces to go into. The important thing here is to make sure once they are glued, they are hanging straight so that it does look like gravity is actually pulling down the weights and the pendulum so that they all hang straight together. Here's how it will look once it is inside the clock. And this is important to check to make sure that you can see it and, it, and you like how it looks once it's inside the middle cavity. Once I'm happy with it, I'm going to slip it inside, make sure it's as even as possible, and then tack it in place with some hot glue. The next thing we're going to do is actually close up the clock. This piece is just kind of a large rectangle that we are going to trace the clock onto because I did find it hard to get two exact pieces to match up with such a curvy design. So I figured out that this would be probably the easiest way to do this. I pre-painted the chipboard brown because once it's glued on, I'm not going to be able to reach it and then traced the back of my clock onto the chipboard. And I'm just going to carefully cut that out. It isn't the most perfect shape, but I would rather it be perfect towards the front of the clock and be a little wonky towards the back. And we're working with the cardboard house and cardboard materials. And so perfection is a little difficult. Um, so we're just, we're going with the flow. Once I have the back cut out, I'm just adding some tacky glue and carefully pushing the clock onto the back piece and also very carefully putting weight on it. Um, don't put too much weight because it could possibly squish your miniature. I can see a little bit of glue in there right now, but it will dry clear, so I'm not too worried about it. 
Next, I'm going to be adding some detail pieces. There's this one piece made from cardboard, the crown looking piece, and then there's two other pieces made from chipboard. And the crown piece obviously is going to go behind this piece. It just gives it a little bit of thickness and a little bit of structure because it does stick up quite a bit from the miniature itself. This crown piece is just a detail to add. And then the circle, which by the way, I cut the circle of chipboard with a um, hole punch and it worked pretty well. So if you can't cut a perfect circle, use a hole punch. Um, and then there's an optional piece to cover up that bow tie area if you don't want to have an opening at the bottom of your clock. So that's what that piece is for. As you can see with my original drawing, I have these shelves and I really like that idea and I was trying to figure out a way to make it work. And jumbo popsicle sticks ended up being, I think, perfect for this design. I'm going to be using my easy cutter to cut the ends off of the popsicle sticks so I end up with rounded shelves. I'm kind of putting them wherever I feel like I want them. I am okay with asymmetry, so I'm just kind of, there. it's going to be very asymmetrical. To start installing them, I'm adding just the tiniest bit of hot glue to the edge of the jumbo popsicle stick and then centering it on the side of the clock and letting it take hold. Now I don't think that this will hold very well forever. It's kind of weak, so I do come up with a plan on how to support it, but this is how I laid out my shelves. I'm going to use a few more pieces of the jumbo popsicle stick. I'm cutting it into smaller little rectangles and I'm just going to have them support each platform. So it doesn't really matter what I put on there. I don't have to worry about it drooping. I'm adding a little bit of hot glue to each end and just a little bit because I don't want it to be gloopy. And then I am putting it underneath each popsicle stick so that it looks like this. Now I'm going to be filling, like we have with the past cardboard pieces, I'm going to be filling the openings with joint compound, and this kind of helps smooth everything out. Working with cardboard can be um, a little bit difficult, and so things don't always turn out perfect, and so having a little joint compound definitely helps. I want to fill in any imperfections and then make sure if there's any cardboard corrugation showing that I fill that in as well. It's extremely important to make sure that it hardens completely before moving to the next step because you don't want to trap any moisture before moving on. And I did give it a very light sand as well. I find that gives me a smoother finish in the end. After sanding, I'm going to go ahead and add the mixture that I've used in the past cardboard house furniture videos. It is half joint compound and half PVA glue. I'm using Elmer's and it's just a one to one ratio. And I am mixing that together to create kind of a liquidy sludge that will harden over the front of the clock. Using a brush for this works really well. Just make sure you wash out your brush immediately if you don't want it to be ruined. And when you get close to the clock face or the door, just be very careful going around those areas. You don't have to go inside the edge that we pre-painted. You really just want to get the surface areas and that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm also making sure to go over the popsicle sticks as this mixture will also give the entire thing a similar texture. I did have one little mess up in the corner of the door and I just used a sharp little needle tool to take off any excess mixture. Once that's completely dry, I can take the same color that I used on the inside edges of the clock face and the door, and I'm going to do a base coat over the entire clock. And this is how it looks so far. Of course, I've used brown on every single piece of furniture, so I had to go with brown again. I did want to do something a little different though, because this is a 
fairy godmother clock, I'm using purple to highlight and shade instead of my normal beiges, whites, and darker browns. And I just thought this would give a little bit more of an interest to the paint job. And it just has kind of a tint of purple over the brown. I also felt like this piece was calling for some hand-painted details. I don't do this a lot, but I really felt like it would add to the piece. And so I used a pencil to sketch out some filigree, fil filigree, there we go, filigree type designs, and then went over it with a very small paintbrush. It's absolutely not perfect, but I think it adds to the charm of a wonky little clock to have some wonky little filigree on there. It's not perfectly centered, but I had fun with it and I think it's a fun little detail. Of course, I have to add some shaved chalk pastel, so I'm using a small brush again and I'm going into areas where I think dirt over time might have built up because I do want this clock to be in the tower so it's a little bit exposed to the elements. Maybe that's something about how it works, that's how it keeps track of the moon cycles. I'm using a piece of paper towel here to take off any of the excess chalk pastel and then it stops coming off on my fingers. So I'm not spraying this one, I'm just taking off any excess. I'm now going to be cutting out this tiny little clock dial from some chipboard and it's going to go in the center here and I'm painting it gold to match the interior pieces. You can cut out one of these, two of these, you can change the shape, whatever you want to do. I'm going to be adding this on with super glue simply because it is going onto a plastic piece and I don't want it falling off later. I did accidentally drop it onto the face. I wanted it right before the full moon setting or the full moon part of the clock and I dropped it in the wrong spot, but I was able to get most of the glue off the plastic. Then I just took my Sharpie and added a little dot in the center to indicate that it's being held on. Now it's time to add some fun and whimsy to the shelves. I'm gonna be using these larger beads to create tiny little vases for some of this plastic greenery that I have that I used in the last video, but now it's going to sit on the shelves of the fairy godmother clock. I also have a little bit of moss here that I think will be fun to play around with. To start creating the little vases, all I'm doing is cutting tiny pieces of my greenery and seeing how much I can fit into one bead. Then I'm going to pre-paint the holes and let that dry while I work on another part of the clock. It was actually a suggestion of a patron to leave this bottom part open and I thought that was a really fun idea. So I am adding some greenery to this bottom part and, and I want it to kind of look like it's climbing up the clock trying to join the other little plants up on the shelves. I also decided I wanted to make at least one candle for the very top shelf of the clock. Aira, are you going to put candles on everything and in everything from now on? Maybe? I made this candle using the same steps I did two videos ago with the crayons, but this time I'm adding a wick by popular demand and I'm using a material I've used before to make wicks and it's the lead from those little mechanical pencils and I found the best way to install it is just to reheat the center of the candle with the hot glue gun, hold the wick in place, and once it dries you'll have a wick in the center of your candle and I think it's kind of fun that it's school supplies all around to make the candle. I did make this away from the clock because it was going to be very close to the clock itself and I was afraid because this process uses fire, it was just, it was best to do it away from the clock. I was going to start cutting this piece out very carefully, but then I noticed it was pulling away from the paper and, and because I have to transfer it onto my clock, I just kept pulling at it and eventually it came away from the paper, which was good news. I'm sure you could also do this on wax paper and make it a little bit easier. 
It was pretty easy to put up on the shelf. I just added some hot glue and then let my candle sit on top of the hot glue while it dried. Then I went back with the nozzle and remelted some of the crayon so it matched the shape of the shelf. If I hadn't done this, it would have had pieces sticking out, but now it looks like it's actually been on the shelf for a while, conforming to the shape. And I did add glue to the wick, so that will dry clear eventually, but um, just so you know, I added some glue. Here are the pieces. I went ahead and glued the greenery in and then painted the rest of the bead, and now they're done. I kind of skipped over the vase thing pretty quickly, <laughs> but really I just glued them in with hot glue and painted them. So pretty easy to get those done. And I think they look really cute. I tried to paint them in colors that went with the clock. So here is the final fairy godmother clock. I am super happy with it. And here's some shaky video footage of me showing you where I was thinking about placing it. This is inside the very bottom of the tower. And I think this is my last wall that I have wide enough to place it. And I knocked this thing over so many times. But as you can see, it's pretty sturdy. <laughs> I did want to give you an update on the broom. It's the only one that I made last week that has really changed. It just looks a little bit more wiry, which I think looks cool. Here's some better photos of the clock around the house. I don't know if it's going to stay in the tower. Let me know what you think, but I really like it. Uh, I think Miss Periwinkle likes it and uh, looks like she's waiting for the full moon, which will be pretty soon. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had one last idea before I end this video. We are coming upon kind of the end of the cardboard house, not right now, but soon. And I was thinking it would be fun to include a lot of the cardboard houses that you have created in the final video. So if you have created a cardboard house or if you've created some of the cardboard furniture and would like it to be included, you can send me an email to this email. Please only send me one picture that you would like included. If your cardboard house isn't finished, that's fine. I just wanna include how much people have put into this project. I won't be able to answer everybody's emails as I already get a lot of emails, but I will make sure and include like a smiley face emoji so that you know I got your email. I'm telling you this now so that you have a couple weeks to turn it in and I will remind you in each forthcoming Cardboard House video and kind of let you know when it's the final week. I hope you all have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Maybe? 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 Maybe, baby. <laughs>